Yo, 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 what it do, what it do? It's your boy, Yellow the Boy here. And today I am here with Mr. Roman Fisher. Mr. Roman Fisher is a high performance coach. He wears several other hats along with that. And he has definitely been here helping some people out. And we're going to actually get into this. So firstly, I want to welcome you, Roman. Thank you so much for coming on to YTP Entertainment. We definitely appreciate you and definitely are looking forward to getting into this conversation with you. So For tell sure. us, what is it that drives you into doing um, health and fitness? This is an awesome thing to be into, definitely. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, so I was not always, you know, wanting to be in the fitness. Uh, oddly enough, I was always that guy that, you know, lounged around, played video games, just basically ate anything and everything that was in my sight, whether it was healthy or not. But what really got me initially in the fitness from the get go were a couple factors. You could even say probably three things. Uh, one being my brother initially, get, uh, you know, starting his weightlifting uh, sessions and journey. And seeing him start that when I was about 15, and I was always that skinny kid, so seeing him lift the weights, build that muscle, and my younger brother doing that, that really pushed me and inspired me, because I'm like, <laughs> all right, okay, so if my younger brother can, you know, do this, and if he can build that muscle, and it's my younger brother, yeah, I got to get into this too, then. <laughs> can't let him beat me. <laughs> so yeah, I was like, I got to get into, you know, this weightlifting journey. Uh, with him and I gotta I gotta tag along so I started getting into that and yeah I didn't want to keep being skinny because that was one of those things throughout school when I was younger that people always like poked fun at me for like not having you know much muscle mass or not really having much meat on my bones so to speak <laughs> so yeah that that was one of those things that really did push me though in that direction 100% um, and then another one was definitely a more, you know, much more serious uh, matter. And it was more along the lines of my grandpa. And, you know, he was one in my family uh, throughout my life when I was younger that I grew up with mm -hmm. quite a bit. We were in different states. Like he was in Wisconsin. I was in Arkansas okay. um, for much of that time when he was alive. But the thing though was we still got together at least a few times uh, each year and we always, you know, met halfway usually or sometimes less than halfway. We would just see each other around the holidays. So being able to connect with them during those times in my life back then, that really helped strengthen uh, our relationship together, you know, th uh, throughout the years. And he was always someone in my family, though, I could just connect with. Um he was always he always had this good energy about him and welcoming energy about him so that really led me to him um and what i what, what's crazy is i actually grew up with uh thomas the tank engine so when i was a kid <laughs> and then my uh, grandpa he had a bunch of trains in his basement so that also led me to connect with him when i was uh younger Pretty and cool. some of those uh, similarities that just happened to be between him and I and what we liked. So that was neat. Um, you know, he was a huge mechanic type guy. But with all that being said, you know, with all that connection between the two of us, him eventually, you know, passing due to cancer. And that, of course, that was a rough thing to, you know, have to hear um, about. You know, my mom actually got the news from her brothers that lived there in Wisconsin and they told her um that he was passing or he passed due to cancer and then yeah after i after i heard that you know i didn't hear it right away but after i heard it through my mom then mm -hmm. that 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 hit me i mean that that hit me in a really 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 strong way um and not obviously in a good way and it put me in a really deep depression for quite some time um but you know, while that was, you know, 100% hard and difficult to deal with and a hard pill to swallow, to say the least, I was able to luckily, you know, have that inspire me, though, to not want to go down that same route, that same journey, that same path for myself. And I also, I also did not want that same path for anyone else around me 
whether I knew him or not. And so what I did between my brother inspiring me to get into fitness from day one yeah. and then seeing my grandpa not take care of his health, you know, because he always was huge on eating a lot of sugar filled foods. He ate a lot of candy, um, didn't care about what he put in his body, really. Um, so all that, that just inspired me to not want to, you know, make that same mistake for myself because, you know, most people don't think of, about, you know, eating, um, and how it can affect your, you know, later years and your overall health. And that's, that's crazy. Cause like, that's what my grandpa sadly, you know, failed with. And he obviously, I mean, while he probably did know the effects that it would have on him and his body, he didn't totally put much mind to it. And it's hard too when you have such an addiction to sugar or anything that's not very healthy, it can keep you going in that same direction, sometimes blindly. Yeah. And I really do believe that's what happened to him. He, he was so involved in his way of eating and he just didn't pay much mind to it. Yeah. But yeah, that, that was definitely a hard um, time in my life back then. But from there though, what, what, what was good though, is it inspired me. So that's, what's really good about, about all of what happened, if you even want to call it that. So I like to try to get whatever good I can out of bad, but that pushed me in that direction to then help myself with my body and everyone else around me for sure. And from there too, I would also say the third thing was I then did a lot of research on what you know, is in our food, all the chemicals, all the not just added sugars that they pump into our food and like how much sugar people usually consume on a daily basis, which is alarmingly high. I hate to, I hate to say it. I mean, it, most people don't even realize like just a single, um, you know, shot of Coke or just a single glass of Pepsi, for example, will actually be quite a bit more than the overall daily intake limit for your sugar they say you know the usda they say that you should only have 36 grams of sugar at the most each and every day tops like that's the max limit and one glass of pepsi can exceed that yeah one serving of that and that's what's so insane just in one serving yeah. and that's that just goes to show people don't really care or at least they might care at times but they're just so caught up in their day-to-day -day lives they just drink whatever's in front of them yeah. and so they're not really always aware and fully mm -hmm. you know knowledgeable of what they should and shouldn't have and how much they're having of whatever that thing could be bad yeah. um, is so <laughs> that's that's the crazy thing so really just researching that dialing all that in and um focusing on what i should and shouldn't have and then also that that inspired me to not just get into more um, physical activities in the gym to get more active, but also to be extra aware of the ingredient labels on everything. And honestly, I even went towards cutting out non organic foods. And now now I pretty much just eat organic, especially when it comes to fruit, vegetables and anything that typically would have pesticides on it. Because of that, that's also a huge factor. Yes. And what I believe is for longevity, because yeah. if you're not taking care of your body, I mean, you're just, you're not going to live as long as you could. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pesticides actually, um, they actually help to increase the addiction. And that's something I learned is in my um, psychology class, they use those pesticides to increase addiction. And they also use um certain things like rat poisons to actually help to increase the addiction and what it does is it reaches a, a point in the brain where your addictions are captivated and once it reaches that portion of the brain then it makes it really really hard for you to get away from that whatever that is that you're actually addicted to it makes it really hard oh yeah you the doctors when they give you something sometimes the cause is to cure but the thing is to bring it down when they're giving it to you they bring giving you something that's going to kind of slowly but surely take it away from that addictive cell that's inside of the brain 
And once they do, then you get to a point to where as you're like, I don't want to deal with this anymore. I don't want to have anything else to do with it. But for some, it takes longer than others for that to actually happen. And it's a it's a process, but it's worth it if you want to live longer. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Definitely worth it. Some people actually don't care whether they live or not, but sad, but it's the truth. This is the reality. This is the world that we actually live in. So um I ask you this on your journey, what part of the um fitness um kind of helps you to battle with not putting yourself in a position to get cancer. Yeah. So what part of fitness really um has been helping me the most, I would say, is obviously, you know, nutri- nutrition is very important. But I would say for the physical side of things, just being consistent, not just being active and working out with the weightlifting and cardio, especially if I'm trying to, you know, lose extra weight, especially for a competition, let's say. But uh, if I'm not doing any like cardio or anything, just the weightlifting and being the, uh, you know, consistent gym goer that I am, I would say that that's been the huge um, stride against cancer for me. And of course, watching everything I eat in the process and just making sure, yeah, that I'm I'm not missing, you know, my scheduled gym days and uh, yeah, that I just take care of my body from the inside out. That's been the uh, biggest thing for sure. And what's also great too is stress, you know, can cause cancer as a, as, that's another thing. I mean, there's so many things that can cause cancer, it seems, but uh, stress is one of those key things. And what's good though, is when you work out, it releases endorphins and that can help fight against that stress that can cause that eventual potential cancer. So that's another huge thing. Cause like, you know, we're all human. So I'll even have some days that are a little like so-so. Um, I like to say that even the bad days are at least learning days. You always learn something from it. So yeah. you come out even either way. Yeah. Um, but even if I'm having one of those days, that's like a so-so day, mm-hmm. you know, I still am going to learn something from it. I can still just get active in the gym and release all that tension and stress that I may have endured throughout that day. And that also is a huge, huge step away from cancer Yes, indeed. that I've noticed. Yes, indeed. So would you say that cancer is more something that is that can be accrued through whatever is intaken through the body? Or would you combat against what medical professionals say and they say that it could also be a um a trait, a family trait, like something that that's um passed down from generation to generation? Would you what would you take beyond that? Yeah, that's that's a great question, honestly. So in that instance, I would say, you know, to an extent, like most things, maybe not everything, but like most things, I could say there is a genetic, um, like they are fairly correct on that. I mean, there is a genetic, you know, play into this. Like, yeah, your genetics could determine it to an extent. But, but we can't say that that's going to for sure, you know, make you have cancer, you know, just because your grandpa had it, like my grandpa got it. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean necessarily that you, that I'll get it or that someone else would get it if their grandpa had it. Um, could it lead to it? It could make it a little more likely. I'll say that like it could, it could make it more likely no matter if you're healthy or not, but the healthier you are, you can easily combat that and you can combat it pretty well to where you basically can remove the possibility. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's always, you know, a possibility of anything. So you can't say that there's a 0% chance when you're healthy, especially if it's in your genetic uh, history, but you can pretty safely assume um, that it's more than likely, like there's a huge chance it wouldn't happen then. But if you're not healthy and you have that genetic, um, you know, history of cancer in your family, then you can bet that you're even more likely to get it. 
But as long as you stay active and just eat clean as early as you can in your life, and you consistently do that, and the same thing with your workouts, and you could uh, stay consistent with the workouts, mm -hmm. then no matter your genetic history, you can pretty much offset, you know, what's been in your family. Right. That's right. That's definitely important to know for anyone out here in the world who don't um, actually take care of themselves and really don't know what's going on as far as the health and fitness as far as care. Yeah. It's really healthy. It's, it's something that not only is mentally healthy, but physically healthy. And everybody needs to know that, hey, there is a way to do preventive maintenance more so than putting yourself out there and allowing yourself to, you know, be caught into that trap. And now you're looking at chemo, you're looking at doctor, yeah. possibly being a part of your life, you're looking at your health depleting. And I don't know anybody who actually wants to go through that. Some of the people don't want to do the work, you know, as far as the exercise, the taking vitamins, eating right. Some people really don't want to do the work, but I don't know anybody who actually wants to be not fit. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's the thing. Most people make that mistake where, you know, they'll get that mindset. Oh, my grandpa had cancer. My grandpa, uh, my grandma had cancer. So I'm going to get cancer. So, I, you know, it doesn't really matter too much how I live, how I eat, if I work out or not. And that's where they go wrong. Because like, even again, even if you have that person in your family, regardless of who it was in your family, even if they had that illness or, you know, disease, that doesn't mean you'll get it. I mean, it could increase the possibility because it's in your genetic history. But there is another side of that too, because if you don't, yeah, if you don't work out and you're not taking care of your body, you're just increasing the chances. If you do, then no matter who had it in your family, you're going to rapidly decrease the possibilities. And aside from that, another thing too, is just because someone had it in your family, that doesn't always mean it's a genetic thing. It could just mean that it was an environmental thing and that they just didn't, you know, they chose to not take care of their bodies. And because of that, they got that illness. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's not always hereditary, I'll admit to you. It, it can be at times, but at times it's not. And especially at the times it's not, then you're even in better shape. So yeah. either way, though, my recommendation, no matter the situation, Mm -hmm. always just take care of your body definitely i totally agree with that <laughs> my grandfather one of my grandfathers my grandfather and my um mom's side he had um accrued cancer but it's not something that's hereditary throughout the family it's not a something that every person or every generation has ended up catching it and passing away from it. It really is it didn't happen that way for our family. So I can relate to it not being a portion of what your genetic makeup is. So I can relate to that. And yeah. my grandfather, he did a lot of smoking, he did a lot of drinking, he did a lot of unhealthy eating. And as he stayed busy, but he didn't actually exercise. Oh, oh wow. So uh, a lot of people <laughs> don't really get that. They feel like if you're busy, 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 then that's exercise. No, it's not. <laughs> right, yeah. I explained to them that the difference is busy, busy, busy is, is you're constantly on the go and you're doing things, but exercise is those repetitive motions that's constantly building that muscle so that you can keep going. It's exactly. It's yeah. not the same thing. <laughs> exactly. And it's great because you're just focused, laser focused, usually on a certain muscle group or part of your body, which mm -hmm. makes it easier to strengthen that area. Because I mean, if you're just going around, you know, lifting things now, like intermittently and walking from place to place. I mean, you are using your muscles a little bit, obviously, but it's not to the same extent. Like you said, it's not that repetitive, you know, constant back to back motion. And that's, that's what's really going to do it for your, you know, muscle groups in your body. Yes, indeed. That's what's going to increase that, that heart rate. 
And some people don't understand, you don't like one of my, one of three of my buddies are physical trainers. One is a competition. He did all types of uh, muscle man nice. competitions. So the other one is military. And then the other one is just a guy who I grew up with in a fraternity and they all became, you know, physical trainers. And one of the things that they ever tell me is you don't have to constantly run and um, do treadmills and things of that nature in order to build up your cardio. There's other ways to build up your cardio. So a lot of people don't look at the whole picture when it comes to working out. They're only looking at little bits and pieces based on what they've heard, based on what they've read. But a lot of people don't get the information directly from somebody who actually knows what's going on. Exactly. And that could, in some ways, it could be a handicap, you know, to an extent, because you're not doing exactly what your body needs it to do. Like, if you want to build your body up and you want to get it up and running, okay, what are some of the things that are wrong with you? Are you trying to get your stomach down? Are you trying to get more toned? Are you trying to get just a specific area toned up because the rest of you is okay? Like, what's really going on with your body? And you need to focus on that, but at the same time, don't take any attention away from the rest of the body because when you do that, then the rest of the body gets out of whack and you're still off balance. Oh, yeah. Creating a balance, not getting away from it. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. That's that's totally that's totally true. I mean, most people don't really um, understand that. They think that they just got to work out a certain part of their body. You know, a huge um, a huge thing in fitness, and this is more on the humor side of things, but it's also very true. A lot of guys tend to care about their upper body, but they neglect yes. their lower body. <laughs> I mean, it's one of those, you know, um, things that a lot of people poke fun at, but it's it's sadly not always true, but quite often pretty true. You know, they talk about the guys that have the strong upper body and the chicken legs type thing. Yeah, but that's the thing. I mean, I get it. Leg day is not everyone's favorite day and probably not a lot of guys' favorite days. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's still one of those things you got to have that balance. Like you just said, you got to have you got to have at least really at least one day really two days in my opinion for your legs well me personally because of one factor and we're adults here let's just keep it 100 if you don't work those legs you neglect stamina oh yeah point blank it is what it is you have to be you have to be honest with them you neglect stamina and don't sit there and tell me that you're going to be like not you but i'm saying in general don't sit yeah. there and say that you're going to be one of the most active men when it comes to a woman no you're not stop yeah. playing with yourself stop lying to yourself tell yourself the truth you neglected your legs and now you're neglecting your stamina thus that one thing that the women complain about you've increased the odds of being that person to give them something else to complain about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I'm a realist. I like keeping it 100. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> you got to keep it 100. But a lot of guys don't see that. You just thinking that, okay, I'm going to look good. and do, uh, Yeah, you may look good at the top. But how's your performance once you get your top all physically fit and shaped up? and you haven't done anything with the bottom, how's your performance? It's not going to be as great as you think it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, tell me something. When you are helping people and you're feeling motivated about helping people and you feel like, you know, wow, I'm, I'm glad to see this person on that journey and things of that nature. When you're helping them, what are some of the key factors that you look for before you even start to help a person? 
Yeah, for sure. So I like to just really know like what their what their past was like. Not doesn't have to be like the whole thing. Just some about themselves, like some about the person, about themselves, what they've done in the past, and then especially I like to then go into their goals too. Of course, I like to know everything they want to achieve, everything they've tried in the past, um, and then everything that's worked and everything that has just not worked at all for them. So I like to look for those key things before even helping anyone. And then, of course, I also like, you know, just really diving deep into their struggles and pain points. And that's that's the key, one of the key things other than their overall goals, because if you don't know what they're really struggling with, then it's hard to really know how to fully and completely help that said person. So I really like to dive in deep um, on their struggles, probably even more than anything just yes. so I can know what's really been holding them back and keeping them in that, you know, rut, so to speak. So that way I can help lift them out and, uh, you know, lift them up and help them get stronger um, or whatever their goal might be. Right. So what nutritional values would you suggest that a person use to help them increase their um endurance and their ability to actually want to to have that energy to actually yeah help. so there's a couple ways of doing this so i'm not one for fad diets i'll just be real so what you could do is if you wanted to if you are that person that likes a fad diet um i would say the key keto diet could be good for energy because the keto diet can give you a or at least not long term what i really recommend for people that want to increase their energy keep your protein intake high because that not only will help keep you full longer and more satiated thus giving you uh, that much more energy but also i recommend occasionally you know with maybe a little coffee because that can help boost your energy too but even if you're not a coffee drinker just <laughs> I like it. I had some coffee this morning, actually. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Team coffee over here. But even if you're not having that, um, you know, coffee, even if you're not a huge, you know, coffee drinker or caffeine addict, if you will, <laughs> you can always um, intermittent fast to you. I mean, that's in a sense a fad diet, but that's not fully a fad diet, in my opinion. It, it's kind of in the middle. It's It's in that gray area for sure. But what you could do, though, is just intermittent fast um, every now and then, even if it's just like two or three days out of the week. And what's really good about that is you're not fully fasting the whole entire day. So especially if you're new to fasting, it's a lot easier to get into you yeah. um, because you're not restricting your you know body from food the whole day. So it's more manageable, especially when you're new to fasting. Yeah. And what's good about that is you're not eating for um, 16 hours and you're having that eight hour eating window. Mm -hmm. So you can usually basically what most people do and what I recommend to keep it simple for the vast majority of people is to just cut out breakfast and then have lunch and dinner every day when you're fasting for the intermittent fasting. And what's great about that is that actually will boost and studies have shown, um, you know, in addition to having that high protein diet, when you intermittent fast before eating anything, what's good is it does boost mental clarity and focus, and it also can enhance performance. Like I've noticed even on days, like if there's one day where I don't sleep as well, which usually I sleep pretty good because I'll take some supplements or of course work out that helps too. Yes. Um, and sunlight, sunlight has helped me sleep a lot too. It's crazy, but more sun actually helps you sleep. Mm -hmm. But um, but back on that topic though, of energy is when you, uh, intermittent fast, that does definitely just boost your overall uh, performance. Cause even on days where I was not sleeping well, if I would fast, at least I would notice my energy would at least stay higher than it would. If I ate something for breakfast, not saying you should skip breakfast all the time. Cause there are benefits to eating breakfast too. Um, but, but if you want that initial boost of energy, in the morning, I do recommend intermittent fasting at least every, you know, once in a while, because that's, that's helped performance for me for sure. Especially if I'm feeling a little sluggish on, you know, on a certain day, because that happens to all of us every, every now and then. Right. Right. That's true. 
<laughs> so how important is it to know your um body mass the um bone mass um how important is it to know those when you're talking about increasing your energy because the reason why i'm asking that is because it's not that i don't know but i do have a vast majority of people who actually watch my videos because i i can i work out sometimes too nice. but i'm i'm getting back into doing more than what i used to do because i had stopped for a while and that was due to covid covid kind of oh yeah away from me and I was like oh my goodness I gotta build back up all over again but I didn't realize how easy it was to build up but how hard it was to restart <laughs> yeah oh yeah yeah so, it's one of those things for sure how important is it to know the body mass how much um water you should intake and things of that nature Yes. So knowing your overall just um, body mass and your weight, it's important um, for a lot of things. Um, I mean, I, you know, other than knowing, um, obviously, your weight and just how much you weigh, it, that's good to know just as a general rule, just to know your overall weight. But from there, you can typically see, especially if you get a in-body body composition um, scale at the gym, which is one of the only really uh, few, you know, body fat measures that I actually recommend. Uh, what's good is when you know your overall weight, you can also see on that scale how much you know body fat you have and how much body fat you would want to cut out. Um, obviously, some body fat is necessary to live, but knowing your weight, you can also take into account sometimes how much body fat you have from that you know overall weight. Because obviously, your whole weight's not muscle, but your whole weight's not fat either. So knowing that, you can separate the two. Um, from your overall weight. But then also too, what's good about knowing your overall weight as well is typically when you're trying to build muscle or even lose fat, you can, um, from knowing your overall, you know, complete weight in your body, when you know that, whichever your goal is, you can then fairly determine how much protein you need. And what's good is typically it's about 0.8 at least to one gram per pound of your overall body weight so when you see uh your weight and you can get that into account then you can from there dial in roughly how much protein that you need to have to maintain that muscle mass so that's another huge um key uh benefit to knowing your just your overall weight um and from from there too uh when you look in the mirror you can also determine roughly how much I mean, obviously, you can't see your exact body fat percentage in the mirror, but you can kind of estimate it. And that's how a lot of professional bodybuilders have done it. Mm -hmm. uh, skin calipers, too, but they'll look in the mirror. So that's another good way of seeing your body fat. Mm -hmm. um, so when you know your weight, you can roughly determine when you look at yourself uh, in the mirror, you can roughly determine how much body fat you might have from your overall weight to you. So it's it's really important just as a general rule to know your weight, especially in contrast to your fat weight and yeah. uh, lean muscle weight. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. It's very important. <laughs> oh, yeah. And your your water intake is definitely important. That's, that's another thing, too. Yeah. You Stay want to make sure, especially, body. yeah, especially if you're athletic um, and especially if you're trying to compete you want to have a lot of water at the beginning, eventually gallons of water, and then eventually no water or very little water. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's one of those things too. But, you know, for most people, even if you're not competing, it's good to have at least 10 glasses of water. But if you're more of an athlete, I would say a gallon. Let's see, I drink more than 10 glasses on the average of water and that's good not too much more but i do drink more than the 10 glasses of water per day now I'm nice getting, i'm every day i'm getting it in I am that's on, good that's my beverage of choice over juice over just anything to drink kool-aid it doesn't matter what it is and i don't drink soda i haven't drinking soda 
and it's been about 30 years now <laughs> oh nice congratulations man that's great <laughs> yeah soda is not one of my friends no way no I've kept that out <laughs> yeah oh yeah for people who struggle with um the abs because i noticed that that's one of the most stubborn areas that people have the hardest time trying to lose weight in oh yeah what would you what would you suggest oh yeah that that's for sure honestly so what i would recommend doing is obviously first and foremost being in that caloric deficit you know because no matter how much you work in the gym no matter what you eat if you're eating too much and even if you're super active if you're eating too much and you're still going past your caloric uh, needs you're going to gain weight uh, ultimately um, at, at best, you're going to maintain that weight if you're having as many calories um, as you're burning off. So you need to make sure to take that into consideration, heavy consideration, because uh, you can't outrun the fork, <laughs> as, as I like to say. And it's it's a funny but true saying, you know, you have to really dial in not only your overall calories you burn, you know, at rest. So that's your BMR, basic metabolic rate. But you also got to figure out your TDEE, which is your total daily energy expenditure. So that's how many calories you're burning at rest and with your current physical activity level. So when you combine that, you get your T, uh, TDEE. From there, you want to make sure you're at least a few hundred, really 500 calories of a deficit, you know, each day below that. That will ensure steady uh, but consistent uh, proper weight loss. And that typically will dial in about a one pound um, of weight loss a week. So first knowing that and doing that, that's the first thing, just being in that caloric deficit in a nutshell. Right. After that, that's the most important thing. After that, make sure you're having a lot of protein, high protein um, from the calories that you're in a deficit in. You want a lot of that to be in protein. Because protein will be metabolized the quickest out of any other macronutrient, fats and carbs, both. And also, too, it'll help maintain that lean muscle tissue, which also, you know, muscle will help boost your metabolism. So that's what's really neat. Other than keeping your muscle mass, that's not always easy to get. It'll help burn that fat a lot easier that way. Yeah. And then <clears throat> from there, too, I recommend, of course, strength training. Um, cardio is important to burn extra calories, but I would say mainly focus on the weights because most people go wrong with just doing cardio and cardio. Yes, it'll help burn calories and in turn can lead to eventual weight loss and some fat loss, but it's not going to help build any muscle. Really. It's just going to mainly burn calories, which is good. But if you're only doing that, you eventually would become more skinny fat. Yeah. It, it's crazy because yes it'll lose some weight but it's not going to lose much fat compared to you know weightlifting because weightlifting and strength training it burns those calories you know it, it'll it burn them more at rest yes. you yes. know cardio burns them more up front but strength training will burn it more at rest yes and what's good about that too is it, yeah it helps build that muscle which then burns more calories so then you'll have more muscle, but also less fat. So you're really, in a sense, uh, training for two objectives at the same time, yeah. almost. Yeah. Now, you won't put as much muscle on if you're in a deficit, but you'll still gain a little muscle and mm -hmm. burn that fat. So yeah, strength training for sure. And then I would say after that, uh, sleep. Sleep's huge too. Getting seven, at least to even eight hours of sleep if possible. Yeah. And doing that as consistently as possible, even if it means taking, you know, melatonin, valerian root, CBD, CBN, if that's what you need to take. And if you don't take supplements, then at least just, you know, make sure to cut the caffeine early. And I'm yeah, with the, the melatonin, I tried it. it just, yeah. It kept me up for three days. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. And that's the thing. Some people have um, side of weird side effects at some um you know, supplements. So if you're not one of those people that takes um, supplements and if it doesn't really work too well for you, my recommendation is just cutting caffeine early and 
limiting blue light throughout the day. And because of that blue light, that'll keep you up and keep your brain thinking it's daytime, even though it's nighttime. So make sure to shield yourself from that wearing blue light glasses or putting your phone down. Um, or even if you have your phone and you don't have the blue light glasses, turn off the blue light in your phone where you can get a night shift if you have an iPhone. So yeah. that's a huge, huge okay. trick to you. Um, especially if you're tech savvy, you can do that pretty quickly. But even if you're not, just YouTube. <laughs> but uh, YouTube savvy. yeah, those things are key. And then, of course, cardio is, nece- is uh, necessary if you want to burn even more calories. But it's not it's not on the top of the fat loss pyramid, so to speak. It's definitely at the bottom or like the next one to the bottom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cardio has been taken down a whole bunch of notches because a lot of people misunderstood or uh, misrepresented what cardios can actually do for you. So it's definitely taken down a whole bunch of notches. And you had all these people who are out here running and jogging and bicycling and you know and bicycling is actually good. That that's fine. But when you start doing too much or doing extras, you're really not just like you say, you're not allowing your body to build that muscle. You're just getting skinny right. thinner and thinner. And I don't know anybody who actually wants to be super thin. I know that there are some professions where they don't mind you being super thin, like modeling, so to speak, but not everybody wants to be that smart. Exactly. Yeah. So that's, that's why you just want to focus mainly on the weights. And then if you do cardio, do it after your session of uh, weightlifting and then make sure to do predominantly for let, let's say you work out an hour in the gym, have at least 40 minutes weights, 20 minutes cardio at the most. Yeah. So basically half of what your session is with weightlifting. That's how much you want to have in cardio, usually at the most. So one of the things that I do is I actually do like I'll do my weightlifting and then I'll shift, I'll start going down, like bringing it, do lesser and lesser on the weights. But to increase my heart rate, sometimes when I'm doing the light weights, I do some fast. And then I'll slow it down just to get my heart rate up. And then I nice. just again, slow it down. And then when I feel like I've reached my peak to where I can't really lift the weights anymore, then I go to the uh, resistance bands. So I'll start working with the resistance bands and still get my heart rate up. And yeah. just getting it going, getting it going. And sometimes after I get done doing that with, and get down to the resistance bands, I'm finally to a point where I can actually go to sleep because I'm not one of those people that fall asleep easily. <laughs> oh yeah, gotcha. Yeah, <laughs> and the that's for sure. Does nothing for me. It's just that I I like the taste of the creamer and the coffee together. It doesn't nice. do anything for me. It doesn't give me energy. It doesn't take away anything. It's just, I just yeah. <laughs> i've heard that too and some people are not as sensitive to caffeine so if you're one of those people it's not as big of an issue but just for most of the people out there as a general rule try to cut caffeine by around 2 p.m at the latest especially yeah. if you're sensitive to it and um, you definitely don't want to have um like your um pre-workouts at too late in the day no no yeah definitely not in the early part of the day <laughs> oh yeah hundred <laughs> percent another quick uh, bonus too on a uh, tip on trying to lose weight when it comes to weightlifting is outside of just pure strength training what's really good you know you can lift heavy and that can also help a lot or you can also do another uh, technique in weightlifting to help burn that extra fat and eventually get the you know get those abs mm-hmm. is doing circuit training you know, with your weightlifting. So doing usually less weight, lower weight. So it's a lot easier because if you're going from one exercise to the next, to the next, to the next, Mm -hmm. taking a few minutes and going back to it for like three or four rounds, you want to have less weight usually. Otherwise that's too much weight with too much, you know, intensity back to back. Mm -hmm. So typically for most people, especially if you're new to fitness, having low weight or at least 
fairly moderate weight at the most and then doing you know each workout back to back to back and then resting like two maybe three minutes at the end of each round that's another great way of losing weight but also having some strength and muscle built some in the process because that really keeps your heart rate up and going yeah i agree with you but that's the reason why i break it down so like I'll do my my heavy, and then I start breaking it down even lower and lower and lower. And nice. It's, it's kind of like like a burnout. It's kind of like a burnout. Yeah. So when I get it low, then I'm I'm doing as many repetitions as I can. I'll burn it out. Once I get it low, I start burning it out, and then I'll switch over to my resistance bands and go the rest of the way. And oh my goodness. Yes. Energy. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah and especially if you're more experienced in fitness i recommend doing you know drop sets supersets mm -hmm. and then you know even training to fill your yeah. now and then to you that, that can also be a good technique to really get you know get sweating but also get your heart rate going pretty well yes it be <laughs> like me and my um me and my son we actually do um time instead of counting nice so instead of trying to see how mean you can do we're doing it to see how long you can actually do it the max is three minutes that's when we kind of stay with the three minute thing because we don't want to overdo it so right we'll do push-ups and if we're doing them um, at a moderate rate let's see how many push-ups not how many but let's see if we can do push-ups for three minutes and just keep doing it for that whole three minutes once that timer goes off because we'll set a timer for it, then bam, stop doing it. Then if we're doing anything else, like doing the pull-ups, if we're doing the uh, bench pressing, you're trying to see those you know, three minutes instead of looking at how many you can do. Because you, I mean, sometimes it's just dependent on the person. Sometimes you're looking to try to do too much and you can end up overworking those. Muscles. Oh, yeah. And some people don't realize how much you're putting into it when you're doing counting how many you do, how many is this, how many is that. Whereas if you just work out at a moderate rate and time yourself at that moderate rate, you can still get a lot out of your workout as opposed to overdoing it. Hundred <laughs> percent. That's yeah, that's so true. <laughs> so we actually learned that from my guy who's a um, professional bodybuilder. That's, nice. That's my boy. We grew up together. We grew up in the same neighborhood together in Chicago, and he became a professional bodybuilder. And then both of his sisters became professional bodybuilders. The nice. only one that wasn't a professional bodybuilder was the oldest brother. He was the only one that never got into it like that. <laughs> oh, wow. That's cool, though. But it is cool. So in your experience, what would you say the difference is working with men versus working with women? Yeah, that's that's a great question. So honestly, um, it it's been... You know, it's been a varying experience. I would say for the most part, though, without a doubt, you know, women and I'm not I'm not dogging the guys out there. <laughs> I'm not dogging the guys out there by any means. But um, I would say a lot of the a lot of the women, though, have been, you know, especially the middle aged ones have been super, super dedicated and super consistent. Um, but I've had some guys that are super great and dedicated in, you know, stick to the workouts, sticking to the meal plans and um, making sure they're getting the calories or even if they have to substitute a thing or two, getting as close to the macros and calories that they need. And then, of course, hitting as many of the workouts as possible, even on the road when they're on vacation or traveling. So it's been great on both sides, on both ends, to be totally honest. But I will say there's been a slight more bit of, uh, you know, consistency and a slight bit more of, you know, overall motivation with the women or female clientele that I've had, especially the middle aged ones. Yep. <laughs> I, I don't know what it is. <laughs> well, you think about it like this, and I only say this from the experience that I have 
and being a relationship coach. <clears throat> when you <clears throat> excuse me, when you look at the overall uh, persistence of a woman versus the overall persistence of a man, a man is usually more apt to be persistent when he's actually going after something as opposed to being persistent for something that he really needs to do. You know what I'm saying? So we're more yeah. opted to be competitive with something outside of ourselves rather than paying attention like, man, this is my body. I need to be more focused on my body. I need to do something to keep myself in shape so that I can be ready for whatever life has to throw at me. But women, they're more so like, man, look, <laughs> Once I get started, I'm going to keep this thing going, and then I'm going to also add some things to it to force me to keep this thing going. So then it becomes, after that, they say it takes 22 days for something to become a habit. Once they've developed their habit for those 22 days, they're going to keep it going and going and going, and they're not going to let it go because... Not only do they see the benefit for now, but they also see the benefit for their future. Oh, and yeah. All the women are focused on their future, whereas the men, we're focused on our future, but not so much for fitness. We're more so looking for the money. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a tough road, but hey, yeah. We get there. But we just not get there as fast as the women are. <laughs> yeah, it's quite funny how that works. I've always, I was shocked by it at first. I was like, "Whoa, okay, cool." <laughs> <laughs> hey, what can I say, man? So let me ask you this: When it comes to everything that you're doing, all the people that you work with, including yourself, what has been your biggest internal motivation and what has been your biggest external motivation yeah wow that's i really like that one so <laughs> i i would have to say my biggest uh man that's a, that's a really deep question i like that okay so my biggest internal motivation would have to be um yeah i would say my biggest internal motivation would just be to and what I'm doing would just to make myself feel like I'm always working towards something that I'm always achieving. I'm always progressing, even if it's a small bit, not just for myself with my own personal fitness and even bodybuilding goals, but also with other people and knowing that I can help other people get to the next level, get to the next step in their lives with their minds, their bodies, and just overall happiness and confidence with their energy to you. Yeah. So just being, knowing that just internally I'm there to help people out, being like their superhero, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> yeah, just knowing that. Um, and then I would say externally, uh, wanting to be the best, you know, most possible fit person I can be for myself. And that way I can then help not just protect my family in times of need, but be there to uh, just be a great example for other people to show that if I can do it, you can too. Yes, and which also will then feed into their internal mind. So it's cool. My external will then become their internal, if you will. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's always a blessing, man. That's always a blessing. That's one of the things I look for when I'm giving people advice as far as um, the things that they go through, as far as building a relationship with one another. It's one of the things that I look for is my external feeding into their internal and protruding out. Yes. Their internal. So once it's once it's reciprocated and they take that information in and they give that to somebody else, I feel like that's one of the biggest rewards that I can ever achieve. Oh, definitely. Hundred <laughs> percent. <laughs> so I look for those things and I look for that to be the overall um, outcome and the overall reason for me actually continuing to build the relationships with people and help them to understand that there's far more 
to this, but it's a lot simpler than you think it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's totally true, man. Totally, 100%. <laughs> so are there any types of um games that you play with your um the people that you're training uh with yourself and things of that nature to help keep you going or to help get you started yeah so basically are there like any types of uh tactics or uh things i do to keep them motivated Okay. Yeah. So what I usually like to do is I do two coaching calls a week with any and all clients I have. And what I really like to do is I always like to set a challenge for them. Uh, after figuring out their three wins, like their three huge top accomplishments for the past week um, from when I last talked to them, I like to then at the very end of each call, I like to dial in with them and have them write it down. But figure out the three things that they even want to do better for the next week ahead. Uh -huh. So that way, anything they were, you know, slacking on or <laughs> anything they were struggling with, whatever it may have been, um, we can pinpoint each and everything and basically just go over the top three things in a, a little detail, what we want to do better and how we want to make that happen. And then after, After they write it down it gets to their subconscious mm -hmm. mind and the next call we do uh, together typically they're i mean they usually almost always achieve that achieve that goal and they overcome that obstacle i actually have that's that's cool that you said that because i actually have a journal that i just uh, made it just came out literally yesterday nice the journal actually focuses on self, self-preservation, uh, self-esteem, motivation. It's like whatever people actually want to put inside of the journal, and it helps them to keep track as they go. It's a uh, it's hundred pages, so you got plenty of room to write down whatever you want to write down. And you can find it on Amazon. It's actually called um, Growth Journal. Okay. So, and it's a uh, it's I feel like it's a, a good tool to help people to um, keep track of the things that they're motivated to do, to keep track of things that they actually want to do later on, and to also keep track of the progress that they're making and things that they are doing. Yeah. It's a good tool, I feel like, and I think that people, more people should take advantage of things like this because this would help them to always always stay on top of things always 100 <laughs> percent. i totally agree with you so i just I, I would love to see people take advantage of things like that because that would help them and i i just want to see people be successful in their journeys throughout life always so without that I don't know, man. It's 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 tough to be in a situation that you're not keeping track of yourself. You're not staying on top of the things that you need to stay on top of. It's tough to live. Yeah, on. it's real tough. And with that, we can we can grow. We can grow so tough that nobody could ever take us down or change us from being who we need to be no one <laughs> yeah exactly we all right so do us a wonderful favor and take us out with something motivational that you feel that everybody needs to know that's beneficial to everybody take us out yeah so for all of you listening out there right now currently just remember motivation gets you going but consistency consistency keeps you growing definitely definitely so let us know let all the people know the fans that everybody know where we can actually um meet up with you or find you and things of that nature yeah so 
if you want to learn more about me and what I do and the people that I've helped with their minds and their bodies with just their overall transformation, all you got to do is go to my direct website, romanfisherofficial.com, or you can even find me at my social media and connect with me there. And it's Roman Fisher Official. That's my social media handle. And I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Awesome. awesome. Oh, yeah. The whole nine yards. <laughs> we'll have a new follower real soon. <laughs> Heck, yeah. Because I would definitely be on there with you. And I must say to everybody out there that's paying attention to this podcast, the website is awesome. You got to go check it out. No doubt. And don't forget to check my man out on the social media as well. But I'm telling you, when I first went to that website, I was like, oh, man, this is pretty cool. This is nice. I really like this. So check it out, everybody. Check it out and make sure that you check out my man, Roman Fisher. He's definitely got good information for you. He's definitely going to help get your body right and get you on the right track. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Roman. We definitely appreciate you being on YC Entertainment, my friend. You have a wonderful and a blessed day. Peace and blessings, my friend. Thanks, Ben. You as well. You as well. Thank you, Thank you so much. <laughs>